Good day, Ziggy here, and welcome back for some more Grim Dawn. Today, I'm going to give you guys another update in my beginner's build guide, and also talk a bit about damage scaling and build creation when it comes to picking different damage types. So, a few things to cover in this video just here. This might be the last update I'll give out for a little while for Grim Dawn because of Path of Exile Ascendancy expansion, but I'll definitely be returning to the game uh, after the hype for that dies down a little bit. So, the character, our uh, our damage over time conjurer, has been performing excellently well, crushing their way all the way through Act 2 and 3, and this update is done at level 36 at the moment now, and this should also cover, you know, a good good chunk into the future as well, well, well up to and beyond level 50 if you guys are kind of wondering where to head from here on out. I'll give you guys a bit of a look at the combat on the character now. In addition to Devouring Swarm, we're also using Sigil of Consumption, and also we've further upgraded the Wendigo Totem, which are looking very good now. So here's what Sigil of Consumption looks like. It does a pretty good amount of damage, but what it what it does very, very well is healing, and I'll go into that in a little bit more, and also Wendigo Totem as well, which is uh, doing a pretty good job of kind of supporting and providing additional healing on top of that. It also now has a damage buff aura that increases our damage with our primary skills as well, so making us even more powerful. And I did see some people expressing some concerns about Devouring Swarm, the idea that you max it really early and then it doesn't really grow beyond there. Well, you'll be pretty happy to know that it still one-shots things, even at this level, and it would probably continue one-shotting things for quite some time. And even beyond that, you'll be able to get more, even more scaling to keep it relevant throughout the rest of the game. But that's kind of the first point about damage scaling, I guess, in this game, is that, yeah, you can max out the skill, and where do you go from there, right? So obviously you can get things like increased vitality damage on weapons. If you're dealing primarily vitality damage with a skill like this, then you can get 70% increased vitality damage. That's going to obviously bring the damage up a good chunk, so you can scale it up with that. But one of the more impactful methods of scaling damage for your primary skills, and a very important part of Grindorm, is plus to skill. So that are things like this, this Bone Spike of Venom that I found that has plus two to Devouring Swarm. Now you'll notice I have one of these, plus two to Devouring Swarm, and I have the Locust Gem, plus two to Devouring Swarm, and that actually gives me a 20 out of 16. So you can actually get well beyond the maximum uh, level of these guys, and the base damage keeps going up and up and up, as well as any other effects associated with it. So the Vitality Resistance, I think t uh, 16 is actually 80%. Vitality resistance, 85%, that 5% less vitality resistance that the enemies will have gives a big chunk of extra damage, in addition to the base extra vitality damage that this is getting. And then I got another 2% bleed resistance uh, drop on the enemies as well, in addition to the base bleed damage that scales up. So plus levels are one of the most effective ways to scale your damage, and should be a priority before other forms of damage scaling. And doing that can help you extend the life of a skill well beyond its normal means. And yes, Devouring Swarm is kind of a one-hit wonder, right? It's a skill that's by itself with no support. There's nothing when you get to level 40, really, like there's no there's no additional tiers of skills that you can do to make Devouring Swarm better directly. There are things you can do, like the Wendigo Totem Blood Pact here, which gives increased vitality damage, so that helps with scaling, but there's not much you can do to grow the base actual skill, except for increasing its actual level. So that's one of the primary things that you should look out for whenever you're rocking a build that's focused on one or two skills especially, but it's a good idea to, uh, if you're spreading out a bunch across a bunch of sk uh, skills, you can also get items that give plus one to all skills in your class. So there is some very powerful legendaries and epics that do that, and uh, if you can, if you're spread out quite a bit like this, then getting plus one to all skills, obviously it's going to give them to your main attack, but also to other things like Heart of the Wild giving us more HP, more on the Wendigo Totem and can be pretty good. And if you do happen to get one of those plus one to all skill items, it's not a bad idea to anything that can kind of support you, whether they be passives or extra aura effects that are not particularly good, they become much better once you get plus one all. So for example, Oak Skin, not really that good, gives a bit of pierce resistant armor, kind of something that we don't really need to invest in or prioritize investing in, but if we do get plus one to all skills, then we'll want to put a point into it because that one point is then worth two points. So you need to enable the skill before you can get that plus one to all skills. So I'll give you guys a bit of a tip for damage scaling uh, for Locust Swarm for this build for leveling if you guys haven't found it yet. And this will also give you guys a tip for any build to look out for where to look for certain uh, powerful items to help scale you up. And that is this item just here, the Rorari Death Touch. And uh, this one and many items like it are available from the different vendors, the reputation vendors scattered around. So in addition to reputation vendors and regular shop merchants being in Devil's Crossing, you can also find others in various other places, like for example, 
example, you can you can find some in Homestead. You can find some in uh, you'll you'll get a choice to no spoilers. I'll, you'll get a choice to join a certain faction, and you can talk to the different faction, the two different factions, and find out which gear they offer. But uh, one such example here for this particular class is if we go into Old Arcovia Rift just here. There's a rover camp nearby. And these guys sell a very nice vitality weapon just here. So if we head down around this guy, um, you'll have to find out which thing you need to do to reach friendly status with them to be able to buy these sorts of items. So these guys require re uh, respected status, actually. But you can buy this one here for just under 1,400 iron bits, and that's very powerful, obviously. 96% increased vitality damage, in addition to a sigil of consumption, too, which deals vitality damage. So when you get hit, you'll sometimes spawn a sigil of consumption, which heals you and deals damage. So a very nice way to scale up your damage while also getting a really nice extra proc. So for, you know, for a re pretty reasonable amount of iron. So to do that, you can hit J here and go to your factions and find out which one it is. So these are the rover camps, and you can find out what what doing what you need to do to increase uh, your your reputation with them. So killing undead for these guys is the primary way to farm it up. So going and farming some skeletons, doing something like Steps of Torment, those are ways to uh, improve that reputation. So you can buy some of these items. So whenever you come across one of these faction merchants, check them out, see if there's anything that's good for your build, and keep an eye out for things that look really good in general, and keep keep them in mind for future builds. So skill-wise, for up till now, what we've been investing in is getting Wendigo Totem up to 12, and also Sigil of Consumption. Now, having played beyond this point now, I would say that if you're following this build guide now and you haven't already caught up to this point, that I would recommend investing in Sigil of Consumption first before Wendigo Totem, because I actually do think it's a stronger skill, and it's also earlier in the tree. So you have to get all the way to level 20, or 20 points into Shaman to be able to start getting Wendigo Totem. So after you've done what I've recommended in the previous video, I'd instead of r rushing to Wendigo Totem, after you've got your Devouring Swarm, you know, maxed out and all that, I would recommend going from Devouring Swarm into Sigil of Consumption. So starting off with Shaman, maxing that Devouring Swarm, then going into Occultist, getting Curse of Frailty, getting up to Sigil of Consumption and maxing that out, because it's a very good amount of damage and a very good amount of healing. So let me show you off this new skill just here, Sigil of Consumption, and then I'll talk about some of the skills we can add in the future to the build to continue scaling it beyond this point. And that's kind of another point I want to make as well, is that you, in addition to scaling the, uh, the base levels of different spells, uh, or different attacks to in increase their power, in addition to getting things like percent increased vitality damage or percent increased physical damage or whatever those scaling factors are, is you continue to scale the damage of a build up by getting synergistic skills, by adding an extra skill. So with a damage over time build, this is a perfect example and one of the reasons why I chose this is because this idea of skill synergies is even more important with a build like this. When something's dealing damage over time, there's not too much benefit to spamming it, to using it over and over again. What you typically want to do is hit an, uh, an enemy pack with it once, so we'll throw out the, the Devouring Swarm, and if guys are still alive, then we'll throw down our next skill. And those two damages, even if they're the same type, so this deals vi Locust Swarm deals Vitality, as does Sigil of Consumption, they each deal Vitality damage, but those stack up, even though they're separate damage over time, for, uh, like mechanics essentially, or they, they each have their own like damage tick per second. They're separate sources, they'll, they'll stack up the damage, and you can stack this up quite a few ways, so you can go three skills on top of each other, and have all those damage ticking on the enemies, dealing more and more damage, right? So you're able to effectively double your damage by putting two skills together that both scale off the same thing. So, when you're making a build, this is a tip for you guys for the future when you're making your own builds, is look for two to three, maximum four, damage types that overlap on skills. So when I was choosing a Cultist and Shaman, I was looking at, okay, Shaman, Devouring Swarm, Vitality Bleed, all right. Wendigo Totem, Vitality, okay. Storm Totem, I can convert to Vitality, and then I'm like, okay, so now we want to pick another class to look at it. There's a few things there that I can see. I can stack a lot of Vitality skills. Good, I can scale Vitality, that's nice and easy. That's one damage type. We can then look at things like Bloody Pox, okay. V bleed, and then Vitality damage. Bleed Vitality, okay. That's obviously a very similar setup to uh, Devouring Swarm as well. Then we can also look at Sigil of Consumption, Vitality damage. So we're seeing a, a, an overlap here, I'm starting to think. Okay, so this is primarily Vitality with Bleed as well as additional scaling. Now, as far as Grim Dawn is concerned, efficient wise for build, I, I recommend two to three damage types max for most builds. And uh, the reason for that is the more different damage types you stack, the less effectively you can scale any one of them. So try and look at skills that have those overlap in damage types as much as possible. And uh, wherever possible, where the skills that have two damage types, try and get them to match up with another skill with the same two damage types. So Vitality Bleed on Bloody Pox, in addition to Vitality Bleed on Devouring Swarm, for example, is a perfect skill synergy there.
So as for what I predict for the future of this build, we actually have choices. You have a few choices and you can play around with the skills you want. It's quite easy to respec actual skills in this game to uh, try them out and see which ones you prefer. So we have some really good choices. I think the strongest are Devouring Swarm and Sigil of Consumption. And then probably going to be Storm Totem for actual damage. So getting Storm Totem with its Transmuter is probably going to do some of the highest vitality damage we can do. And you can drop that down while casting other spells and still deal a very good amount of damage. So those are going to be kind of the big three. I do think Wendigo Totem is very nice because of the combination of it dealing damage, healing you, and also providing an aura buff as well. The good news is you can actually have both of these up at once, I believe. So these are both good options. So I'm going to just kind of list out all of the options of good skills for this build. So in addition to Curse of Frailty, Sigil of Consumption, Devouring Swarm, Wendigo Totem, Storm Totem, we also can get Bloody Pox. And those are the list of skills. Now you're probably going to want, I think, around four of those, five max. If you're getting all of those, then you're going to be spreading your points too thin. The build's not exactly going to work out. You're not going to be able to invest in any of them too much. And at a certain point, having multiple skills to cast, you'll go through, all right, you'll cast skill one, cast two, skill two, cast skill three, cast skill four. Skill one is well off cooldown. Maybe the duration's even worn off. If you're casting a fifth skill, you could just be casting the first skill again. The duration will have worn off by that point. So... It could be helped with things like cast speed, and it can get a little tedious to play something that has five skills. So three, maybe four skills max, I think is the way to go for this sort of a build. And uh, it will be pretty fun to play having that kind of variety in skills as well. A bit more active than some of the other builds in this game, can, which can be a little one skill spammy. As for progressing this build beyond the early game, so beyond that level 25 to 30 range, so basically beyond 30 here, you want to start investing a lot more into physique. The game gets much more dangerous as you pr further progress, and especially end game once you get into ultimate difficulty, it can get much more dangerous, and you need to start investing into that physique. The reason why we didn't really invest much into physique, and I suggested two cunning, two spirit, and one physique earlier, was because you don't really need that much survivability in the first 25, 30, even 40 levels, really. You don't need that much survivability. The game is pretty easy if you can kill things quickly and that's what we were focusing on but now that we're progressing further you want to start putting more points into physique exactly how much i'm going to leave up to you guys if you're playing hardcore you're going to want to put most of your points into physique and just enough spirit and cunning to equip whatever gear that you get but uh i recommend a, a two you know a one 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 split is going to be fine um for i think most new players for uh the first 50 60 levels and then maybe for the last couple levels you might want to invest more into physique just to get into ultimate difficulty and have a bit more safety so guys hopefully you found this helpful as always if you have any questions about grim dawn or some suggestions of certain guides you'd like to see in the future please do let me know in the comments below hopefully you're enjoying the build from the comments in the last video it seemed like you guys were having a pretty good time with it so i hope that continues anyway that's it for now i'm ziggy d and thanks for watching